Oh my god, hey. If you are seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theater. Currently the buzziest piece of theatre news is that Hannah Lowther, Lowther? Lowther? Hannah from Heathers at the Other Palace Theatre who is in the ensemble as the new wave girl and also covers the roles of Heather Chandler and Heather McNamara and is also TikTok famous and is also an amazing YouTuber. Go and watch New Wave Wednesdays, they're so much fun. She made theatre history last night by going on for Heather Duke, not one of the Heathers which she normally covers and also making her the first performer to ever get to play all three Heathers. And as is always the case, there is just an outpouring of love and support for her from not only her cast, but all of the theatre community who just love to uplift and celebrate an understudy stepping in to save the show. It's a fantastic thing. And it's a story we're hearing more and more recently. Just the other day, Chris O'Mara, one of the swings from Cabaret, learned an entire new track during the interval of the show. This week at Frozen, Joshua St. Clair was understudying the role of Hans. And then halfway through the show, due to cast injury, he had to go back into his other role as Pabby and then come back on his hands. So he's playing fully two different characters during Frozen. Explain that to an audience halfway through the show. And recently, Carolyn Maitland, who is joining the cast of the new musical But I'm a Cheerleader at the Turbine Theatre, went on in a new role with only four hours of rehearsal. Now, these stories are amazing and inspiring and say so much about the resilience and the power and the ingenuity and the adaptability of trained theatre performers. And while I am really thrilled to be able to celebrate these understudies and thrilled that they're getting these opportunities and it's leading to such things as Hannah Stewart getting to go and be fantastic in Six on Broadway, I do also feel there's a conversation that needs to be had about why this keeps happening. So today we are going to be asking the questions, is it up to the understudy to save the show in the West End or is it up to the producers to make sure that doesn't need to happen? I do want to say, first of all, I'm not here to criticize any producer trying to make make shows happen during an ongoing pandemic. And I do think we are still in an ongoing pandemic. Look at the numbers. We are not entirely out of the woods. We are still into the woods. Haha. -ha. Against insurmountable odds, against such financial challenges, the theatre industry, the live entertainment industry has really been left with very little choice but to persevere in whatever way that they can. However, there are lessons to be learned based on this time. So I want to take you back a few years. When six first performed at the Edinburgh Fringe, there was a cast of six queens and one cover, the incredible Grace Moat, who was covering all six queens by herself. They subsequently went on an entire tour of the country, multiple queens went down, and Grace could not be in two places at once on the damn stage. So they had to call back up Renee Lamb, and I believe another queen still performed despite injury, which is really something you completely want to avoid having to ask someone to do. So six goes to the West End and they're thinking, we probably need more than just one cover. They hire Courtney Stapleton and Vicky Manser. They alternate with the main cast because six does more than eight shows a week. So to make sure no one performer has to do all of those shows, they had alternate dates as well as being able to cover any unexpected absences. However, once again, someone's on holiday, someone injures themselves, someone else gets sick. Suddenly they have run out of Queens. This is what happened when Genesis Linnea had to step in and reprise her role as Anna of Cleves. And then it happened again. They had Genesis back, but they were still down another person. And this is when Toby Marlowe had to step in and sing the role of Catherine Parr in a concert staged version of the show. At this point, six are learning their lesson that they need more covers. Then they launch the UK tour. <laughs> the UK tour begins with three covers and London has four covers by this point. They still manage to run out of Queens. It happens constantly. I cannot tell you how many times there have been crazy things happening at six. May are having to come back after leaving the show to go and help out the tour in Manchester. Cast members from the tour being put in a taxi to go up to London to make their West End debuts to help save the London show. At this point, six have learned their lesson and when the new cast opened at the Vaudeville Theatre recently, there are almost as many covers as there are principal queens. So the entire cast could go down and the show would still be able to go on. My point is, this is a show that learned its lessons from its hard and trying times. Cut to Paul Taylor Mills' production of Heathers, trying to reopen the tour and a new West End production simultaneously during a pandemic. And there were a couple of occasions where people from the London cast had to go and understudy in the tour cast to help the tour stay open and various different issues. And they had people coming back and reprising roles. Then cut to this most recent run at the Other Palace. 
This has been wild. Multiple different occasions people have had to come back from previous casts, and one of the issues that causes this is Heather's does not have swings. Now let me explain what a swing is if you're not sure. When a principal cast member, for example the actress playing Heather Chandler, is unwell or unable to perform for whatever reason, a member, usually of the ensemble, who has understudied that role, will then play that part instead. However, they still have lines and a position in their ensemble track. They might have to slap Veronica's lunch tray, they might have to sing She's the horse I never got for Christmas, integral parts of the show. So a swing is someone who understudies those ensemble roles. And also a member of the ensemble themselves could be unwell and unable to perform in the same way, so you need someone to cover their roles. Heather's does not have swings, which means as soon as a principal cast member is unwell and a member of the ensemble has to move up, there is just a gap in the ensemble and they have what's called a cut show, which is where they have to redistribute those lines among the other ensemble members. So the situation for Hannah having to go on for Heather Duke is that principal Heather Duke, Inez, was unable to perform, as well as first cover and only cover Heather Duke, not able to perform, which means there is no one else in the building who covers that role or has played it before. I'm assuming they attempted to call people back from previous casts because that has happened during this run. They have had previous Heather Dukes come back for this other palace run, but I'm guessing nobody was available. And because Hannah, you know, she's done Candy Store, she's played the Heathers, they're always on stage at the same time, McNamara and Duke pretty much share the stage the entire time, so she kind of knows her lines just from having learned the one role and played McNamara a bunch of times. So she felt like she could do it, she learned it, she did it, great, fine, amazing, she's fantastic. Because she was on for Heather Duke and because Mary Jean Caldwell was on for Martha Dunstock, it left May Tether as the only female member of the ensemble. And while I completely reject the idea that an understudy performance is in any way less than, because I think understudies are superstars and I've seen some incredible understudy performances, I think when you're seeing that cut a show where you only have one member of female ensemble, I don't care what you tell me. That is a slightly diminished version of that show. It just is. And the other issue I have with this is something I touched on previously when I was reviewing this production of Heathers at the Other Palace Theatre. A lot of the roles that in the most recent West End run were being played by people of colour and now being played by white actors. And I don't think this is a one-way door where once a role is played by a person of colour it can only be played by a person of colour if that's not integral to the character. However, it is disappointing that, you know, such progress was made in this particular show, and then we're going back to a very white cast. With the exception of Heather Duke. Now, as far as I can work out from the show, there's nothing canonically to suggest that her character has to be a woman of colour. However, ever since the show has first been professionally produced off-Broadway, it has always been played by a woman of colour. In the original West End cast and in subsequent casts, that is always how the role has been cast, which is something that I take issue with anyway, because I feel like so often when a show comes over from Broadway, there's this template of diversity, and it's like that's the non-white role, for literally no good reason other than the fact that it's what people, directors, producers, casting directors, whoever they may be, are accustomed to, and what people expect visually. Which is completely gross, if I'm being honest. But I do fully support this role being cast as a person of colour consistently, because if not for this role, then the entire cast would be white at this most recent Other Palace run, which is just as gross. In fact, way more gross. So my issue here is, when you cast Heather Duke as an actress of colour, and you cast one other actress of colour to understudy that role in the ensemble, you are making a very clear point about that character. And when a white actress has to play that character because both of those actresses are calling out and you then have an all-white cast, it just feels conspicuous and it draws attention to the lack of diversity in this cast. Like, we're very much supposed to be making progress in terms of reflecting diversity on our stages, and this cast at this performance would have been whiter than the original Other Palace cast years ago. It just feels like a big step backwards. So I do have a few casting issues here, and I don't know who these decisions came down to, whether it was producer Paul Taylor Mills, whether it was director Andy Fickman, I really don't know. I do feel it's irresponsible at this point not to have more covers and more swings to cover the ensemble in this production. They keep being short-staffed, as it were. This keeps happening. I don't know how they haven't learned from the number of previous times they've gone through the same situation. However, there is a cast change approaching for Heathers. I am hoping that they manage to take on more swings, that they are receptive to this criticism, 
based on a small Twitter interaction that I saw earlier today where a fan suggested to Paul Taylor Mills that he ought to have more swings for the production to prevent this exact circumstance from happening and someone having to learn a role they don't already cover and being expected to save the show. In response to this, Paul Taylor Mills blocked this particular fan of the musical Heathers and hasn't really wanted to have much of a dialogue about it, which is within his right and Twitter can be a very confrontational place. However, it might not hurt him to be slightly more receptive especially because exactly the same problems are happening at But I'm a Cheerleader, Paul Taylor Mills's other musical happening at his other theater, The Turbine Theater. So Carolyn Maitland had to step into a role again with four hours rehearsal under very similar circumstances. She was set to be joining the show to understudy two of its female roles anyway in a track that was being created for her because this production did not start with enough understudies, did not start with enough swings, and has now, to its credit, recruited more because they've had to cancel a buttload of performances, which for a new musical is not something you want to do. They need to be building hype, they need to be building word of mouth. They don't want to be having to cancel performances of a limited run at a small venue. But this does make it even more baffling as to why Heathers can't learn the same lesson and just take on the few extra covers that it needs. I was talking about this with someone earlier who maybe has even more stagey knowledge than I do, which I know it's possible, who knew? They suggested that the show should have a dedicated standby to cover all three of the Heathers, which I don't think would be that crazy of a track to learn, especially when you consider that some people cover all six queens in six. And that's exactly the type of person, the type of performer you would need to cover all of the Heathers. I do think it would be great if this was a non-white performer, because then you have a guarantee that you always have a diverse lineup between these three Heathers, which I just like because when you're telling a story about the popular girls, I think for them to all be pretty and thin and white, while it may reinforce a very accurate narrative, it's not something that's great for us to be depicting on stage and just reinforcing needlessly. Now, when I talk about standbys, this is somebody who does not perform in the show unless they are needed to cover a certain role. The Phantom of the Opera has a standby. Christine Daae has an alternate. A lot of Angela Webber shows, in fact, have historically used alternates and standbys. In the original production of Evita, the actress playing Ava Perron only had to do six performances. She had an alternate for the other two. Same with Christine Daae. This is either because Andrew Lloyd Webber realized he had written some very vocally demanding scores, or because both of the actresses in those original productions were sleeping with one of the composers. Oops, I said that out loud, but it's true. You can Wikipedia it. It's, it's not even salacious. That's just factual and very many decades old. Standbys and alternates are something we're actually seeing more of in the West End. Carrie Hope Fletcher has an alternate as Cinderella in Cinderella, another Andrew Lloyd Webber show. Dewey Finn has an alternate in School of Rock, another Lloyd Webber show. I, for the longest time, have been saying that Elphaba should have an alternate in Wicked, because this is surely one of the most vocally demanding roles in the West End. Having an alternate would mean the actress is able to maintain her vocal health better, she's able to maintain more of her stamina, she's more likely to be on at the performances she's scheduled to be on for, and Wicked fans always want to go and see the understudies and the alternates. It's really exciting to see an alternate. Wicked fans are always really into those performances, and the tourists who buy the Wicked tickets tend not to care who is playing Alphaba. It just means fans have an opportunity to see that performer. It's a great chance for them to perform regularly and to be seen and to go on and gain that experience. And you're also more likely to see the principal performer at their scheduled performances. Another interesting understudy story that is currently happening in the West End is Joel Harper Jackson in, and I have to say this play name on YouTube once again, Cock. Now this play opened with multiple stars in its cast, headlined by Jonathan Bailey and Taron Egerton, stars of television and Hollywood. Audiences finally got the chance to see Anthony Bridgerton and Elton John of Rocketman together on stage being homosexual and had to pay a fortune for the privilege. Now, when Taron Egerton dropped out of the show after fainting at the first preview and subsequently having COVID, perhaps, he was replaced by understudy Joel Harper Jackson, who has been gaining rave reviews and who I would love to go back and see in the show. I've heard fantastic things. But this then did spark a conversation about inflated ticket prices because the prices audiences were being charged for these tickets were 100% tied to the status of not only Jonathan Bailey, but Taron Egerton, because Jonathan Bailey is a huge rising star at the moment. Bridgerton is happening, but Taron Egerton is the movie star. One of these things is not yet like the other. And while I think that shouldn't matter, and I don't think anyone should be entitled to ask for their money back because an understudy is going on, because again, it reinforces this idea of understudies being less than, which I don't think is true, I think producers have only themselves to blame when they charge enormous inflated ticket prices based on an individual name that they cannot guarantee to 
appear at every single performance. It's asking for financial trouble. Now, honestly, I'm not sure how all of this even necessarily ties together or that I have all of the answers, except for this one suggestion that understudies should be uplifted even more than they are. Right now, the support for understudies in the West End is reactionary. Someone has gone on and saved our show. Oh, thank God for that person. Let's put out a press release celebrating them to distract from the fact that we clearly haven't hired enough cast, enough swings, enough covers, and that there's really a negligence there from the producers, let's uplift and celebrate that understudy to distract and refocus that narrative. Instead, let's celebrate understudies in the first place. Let's give them more scheduled dates. Let's make alternates a thing for these really grueling roles. Let's give more opportunity to ensemble members and swings, these talented, talented performers, often drama school graduates or very early career performers who can absolutely play these roles but don't necessarily have the credits to be trusted with a main principal performance but you can put them in an ensemble role, you can let them go on a few times, give them a few scheduled performances in a principal role, and let them develop their skills, let them train, let them gain industry experience. Everyone benefits from this, literally everyone benefits. And when I say understudies aren't celebrated and uplifted, there is a show in the West End that had scheduled alternate dates where an understudy would go on weekly at this performance every single week and this would be clear to fans and everyone and they made no secret of this but they refused to call them an alternate why is that if someone is going on for those performances let them be considered an alternate i'm also reminded of amber riley's olivier awards acceptance speech where she only performed the role six nights a week which i think is incredibly valid effie white in dream girls is a hugely demanding role and it gave a great opportunity to her then alternate Marisha Wallace, who has become a huge star in her own right in the West End. However, in Amber's speech, she said, I play Effie White every night. And it's just not true. More understudies, value understudies. Let understudies have scheduled performances. Stop considering them less than or an alternative or an emergency solution. I'm reminded of the Olivier Awards where towards the end, and I don't know if this made it into the highlights broadcast, but Maria Friedman, queen that she is, announced a special performance of Our Time from Merrily We Roll Along, written by Stephen Sondheim, to be performed by the understudies of all of the shows that had performed that evening. So you had the understudies from Moulin Rouge, from Cabaret, from Drifter's Girl, from all of the shows, from Frozen. Everybody was there from Back to the Future. And they got to perform on stage at the Olivier Awards. And it was this lovely, lovely tribute and something I genuinely wish happened more often. I would love to know your thoughts about this down in the comments section. If you've recently seen any of the understudies mentioned in this video or any other understudy performances, let me know who you have seen recently and tell me what you thought in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my stage YouTube channel for plenty more content coming very soon about all of your favorite shows. Also, if you want to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where you can gain access to a bunch of exclusive photo and video content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>